Good morning. Welcome to this service of worship on this last Sunday in June. In June, already. We give thanks. We give thanks for the, the weather. Um, it was a nice drive this morning. I thoroughly enjoyed my drive. And so wherever you are worshiping from here at home, welcome indeed. I have a couple of announcements to, uh, to share with you. A couple of reminders. Uh, first off, the Vacation Bible School is taking place from 9 until noon, July 11th to the, the 15th. That's not that far away. And the, the children will be on the case, solving, solving clues and learning more about God. There's a lot that's planned during this week. And in order to register, please give the church a call and leave a message or email Marilyn. Second reminder, Tuesday is session, session at 7 o'clock. I also wanted to um, share with you right now, 50 million people across 45 countries are facing emergency levels of hunger. Stress on global food systems could lead to 323 million people facing acute hunger in this year 2022. That's unacceptable. Unacceptable. PWSND, Presbyterian World Service and Development, is one of the organizations that has started a campaign to respond to this worldwide hunger situation, crisis. And as usual, you can donate on your envelope in the offering plate, or there is a link on the Presbyterian Church website that you can go to and donate directly. All donations that are made before the 17th of July will be matched dollar for dollar. So now's the time to do it. Thank you. We are here today and we are going to celebrate uh, we're going to celebrate the fact that on Friday, we're having a party. It's Canada Day. So at this time, we are going to um, sing. remain standing. Let us pray. Eternal God, whose reign extends from sea to sea to sea, and whose care endures throughout all the ages, hear our prayers for our country. Grant wisdom to those who govern it, respect for human life and dignity to every citizen, so that justice may flourish and all peoples may live in unity and in peace. We do give thanks, O God, for this land of ours, glorious and free. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever, we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. 
let us give thanks and let us worship. Please join with me in our responsive call to worship. <clears throat> it is good to give thanks to the Lord. Let us sing praises to God. We will declare God's steadfast love in the morning. And God's faithfulness night after night. Let us make a joyful noise to the Lord. For God is good, and many know God's blessings. Let us worship God with grateful hearts. We will give God thanks and praise and grace. Let us join together in singing, We Are God's People, hymn number 472. join together in prayer. Let us pray. Faithful God, you created our minds to grow in wisdom. You created our hearts to expand with love. You created our voices to sing your praises forever. And we come before you this day with joyful praise, turning to Jesus for grace and for guidance. Fill us to overflowing with your Holy Spirit so that the fruit of the Spirit will bound and grow in our lives. May we worship you in spirit and in truth and serve you with the example of Jesus Christ our Lord. Faithful God, you call us to follow you, whatever the circumstances. And yet we confess that all too often we prefer to remain where we are doing what we do. You offer us new beginnings but we continue to make the same choices, guided by our own desires. 
We make excuses so that we might avoid your challenge to change. Forgive us, O oh God. Cleanse us with your mercy and energize us to serve you even when the challenge seems far too great. For we pray all of these prayers in the name of your Son, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. We are forgiven. In Christ, we are forgiven. The blessing for each one of us. Let us join together in the passing of the peace. Peace before us, peace behind us, peace under our feet, peace within us, peace over us. Let all around us be peace. The peace of Christ be with you. Peace of Christ.
Thank you. Thank you to the choir. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Once again, works so beautifully. You gonna come forward? Yes, join me. <laughs> Great. All right. So I'm gonna actually stay here. I brought my flag. It's a very tiny flag. I do have a really big flag at home, but it's too hard to take it off the pole. So I brought my little flag because I wanted to talk for just a minute about the fact that yeah, Friday's Canada Day. Friday, we celebrate the fact that we live in this country that we just sang about with our first at, at the very beginning of the service, and we said, God keep our land glorious and free. Yeah. Because we are free. You heard me when I was talking about the fact that there are millions of people who don't have enough food to eat. There are millions of people that are starving. There are so many people in the world who don't have home. We have homes. Quite nice homes, I'm sure. All of us. Very happy with our home. It keeps us dry. It keeps us warm. It keeps us cool. We have clothes that we like to wear. We have all of this. And we need to say thank you. Not just on Canada Day. Not just when you wear red. Not just when you put maple leaves all over everything. But we need to say thank you. We need to remember that this is our land but we're also responsible for it and so as well as saying thank you and being happy that we live in Canada for so many reasons being happy that we live in Canada we also need to take care we need to make sure that when we're able to vote we vote we need to make sure that when decisions are being made for our country, we're making sure the right decisions are being made and if we're at all able to add our voice, we need to do whatever we can. And we need to take care of the land, keeping it glorious. So that's helping to make sure that it stays green and fruitful so that we have food to eat and we give thanks we give thanks for all of this and as we sang in O Canada God keep our land glorious and free yes we give thanks to God for everything that we have but we remember and we do our part okay and when it comes time to vote you vote Okay, now that I've got that out of my system, <laughs> this is good because we do have a responsibility, whatever age we are, and we get to enjoy it. So enjoy this week. You've got classes for another couple of days? Three days? Okay, well, enjoy. They're almost done. And then celebrate. Celebrate, 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 and have an absolutely incredible summer taking care of yourself. And you're part of the world. Okay. <laughs> Blessings. Be free. <laughs> they are great. <laughs> so... Our responsive psalm this morning is parts of Psalm 77. It's a couple of verses and then we jump a bit. So I would invite you to join with me in Psalm 77. I cried out to God for help. I cried out to God to hear me. When I was in distress, I sought the Lord. That night I stretched out my tired hands, and I would not be I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. I will consider all your works and meditate on all your mighty deeds. 
Your ways, O God, are holy. What God is as great as our God? You are the God of the world and miracles. You display your power among peoples. With your mighty arm, you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. But the water saw you, the water saw you in the night, the very depths were engulfed. The clouds poured down water, the heavens resounded with thunder. Your arrows flashed back and forth. Your thunder was heard in the whirlwind. Your lightning lit up the world. The earth trembled and quaked. Your path led through the sea, your way through the mighty waters, though your footprints were not, to, were not seen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and And then reading in Luke's account of the gospel, in chapter 9, verses 51 to 62. Luke chapter 9. As the time approached for him to be taken up in heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. And he sent messengers on ahead who went into a Samaritan village to get things ready for him. But the people there did not welcome him because he was heading for Jerusalem. When the disciples James and John saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call fire down from heaven to destroy them? But Jesus turned and rebuked them. Then he and his disciples went to another village. As they were walking along the road, a man said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, foxes have dens and birds have nests, but the son of man has no place to lay his head. He said to another man, follow me. And he replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Still another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. Jesus replied, no one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. Amen to these readings from God's holy word. We are going to join together in singing hymn 662, Those Who Wait on the Lord.
the readings this morning are readings from the lectionary for this day. And as I was reading, I got thinking about how we believe, our faith, how we express our faith, how we experience our faith. And we do it in vastly different ways. I mean, we don't, we don't all believe in the same way. We don't all express it in the same way. And that's okay. It's not that we need to all be cookie cutters in the same form. But in our faith, there does come a time when we need to step up, when we need to clearly and maybe openly declare, I believe, I am committed God's place in our lives is not just a matter of convenience. It's not something that we can take for granted or that we can assume. Just as I was talking to the girls this morning, I, now I didn't say we can't take our country for granted, but, but that's a part of it as well. We live in a country where we are free. Yeah, maybe we aren't happy at times, many times. Maybe we argue about where we're headed. Maybe we argue about our leadership. But we live in a country that is free, that is glorious. And we can't take that for granted. And we can't take that understanding and that belief and that faith in God for granted. I worked at Knox Church for a number of years, and, and they have a massive massive stained glass window right there huge probably takes up more than the pipes take up it does take up more than the pipes take up and it's that famous picture of Jesus standing at the door and knocking there's no doorknob the door has to be opened for Jesus to enter and that's a part of what it's all about. We can say, oh, I believe, I believe, I believe. But until we take that step and we open that door and we accept God, and I'm not going to get all, okay, I better not say it. But, but we do, we need to accept, we need to make that commitment. It's not just a, okay, God's here, I believe. It's got to be more than that. And it's not something that we can necessarily logically go through a bunch of steps and say, okay, okay, now I'm at that point. All right. It's a heart thing. It's a heartfelt thing. It's an opening the door and welcoming in. And when we do that, we're going with Jesus toward Jerusalem. We're accepting that this is a part of the journey that possibly could be hard. It's interesting in the, in the reading, in the reading in Luke, when it speaks about the Samaritans not welcoming because they knew he was headed to Jerusalem. We have this, we, we know this, there was a clash. There, there were major differences between the Samaritans and the Jews. And yet, the number of times that Jesus referenced connecting with a Samaritan, connecting with Samaritans, talking about the Samaritans and the ways in which they responded. But back to our Luke passage, yeah, they didn't accept. Because he was headed to Jerusalem. And the journey that Jesus took was a very difficult one. Of course, we, knew, we know because we can read. The journey Jesus took 
was to the cross. Jesus knew that that move to heading towards Jerusalem was a major turning point in his ministry. A major transition in Jesus' life. Jesus had been teaching about what was involved in being a follower, what was involved in being with him, and the sacrifice that that would, would take. And now, the days drew near for him to be taken up. And he's turned towards Jerusalem, towards the death, towards the resurrection. We all face transitions in our lives. I'm sure none of us have faced that kind of a transition in our lives. But as we grow and as we develop, we can see the journey that we've been on. We can see our understanding of scripture growing, our understanding of what it means to be the church. I said to someone um, several weeks ago, who was obviously not really involved in church, and I said, church with a capital C, and he said, what does that mean? <laughs> I said, that means the church. Not the church here in Walkerton, the Presbyterian church here in Walkerton. Not the Presbyterian church in Canada, but the church. Church with a capital C. And we learn about that as we grow and develop, as we journey along with Jesus. We learn about what it means to be a child of God, to be one of God's children. We learn what it means to be loved so fully and so completely by this wonderful Jesus. And as we grow and develop, we can be involved in the world in ways that maybe we couldn't before. We can learn to experience out there and share what our journey has been while we're doing that. Now Jesus, Jesus had a lot of opposition. It wasn't just when he turned his head toward Jerusalem, turned his face toward Jerusalem, but all along there was opposition. And often it was hostile opposition. Sometimes it was just puzzled opposition because, it, wait a minute, who is this? This is, this is that carpenter from Nazareth. But sometimes it was hostile. You can't be the son of God. That's blasphemy. And many who met up with him turned away, didn't want to receive, didn't understand what it was and who he was on this journey. And the people of Samaria were defiant. They only saw him in relation to making a pilgrimage to the holy city, to Jerusalem. And so therefore, we don't want to have anything to do with you. The Samaritans, as I said, the Samaritans and the Jews had some clashes. Samaritans worshipped God differently from the Jews, worshipped God, the one God with a capital G, but they refused to have anything to do with one another in the time of Jesus and for a long time before that and following that. But Jesus consistently was supportive and accepting. As I said, we have stories. Remember the parable of the Good Samaritan, the one who stopped the man who'd been robbed and beaten and left for dead. This Samaritan stopped even though a scribe and a Pharisee passed him by because wasn't important. The woman at the well in Jesus' gospel was a Samaritan. Jesus gave her living water as he offered her wholeness in life. And as you would probably expect, because he wasn't being accepted, we have these 
very forceful sometimes, disciples, James and John, who said, well, let's rain down fire on them. They didn't accept you. Let's punish them for this. But that wasn't Jesus' way. Jesus doesn't choose to punish those who decide not to follow. Doesn't punish those who are reluctant to support him. Instead, we're reminded over and over and over again that this is a savior. This is our savior who is love, unconditional love. Not about punishing those who resist or compelling anyone to get in line or face the consequences of fire raining down. This is one who invites those to believe and to walk the journey with him. And unfortunately, we're not all ready to walk that journey all at the same time, or even maybe ever. And the second part of this passage in Luke talks about those encounters in which Sincerity in faith just wasn't quite enough when put to the test. When you look at it, each response sounds reasonable and appropriate with these encounters with Jesus. But following Jesus isn't just one of a series of priorities or one of a series of, well, I'll do this today. Or I'll do this tomorrow. With everyone putting something ahead of the desire to follow. So the first one sounds very exuberant. I will follow you wherever you go. Okay. And Jesus kind of cuts to the chase and says, okay. But here's what you need to know. The foxes have holes and the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Oh, well, I used to like camping 40 years ago. Now I really like having a bed and four walls and a roof. Doesn't have to be my bed, but yeah, I mean, I like exploring, but... So, you know, okay, there's nowhere to lay my head. That's going to be a problem. I may need to reconsider. No place to call home? Yeah, I think I need to reconsider. And the second time, Jesus says, follow me. The second offer. And he says, follow me. And the response is, Give me time to bury my father. Now, I mean, that sounds like a fair statement. But you need to know that the Jewish people were taught that giving someone a proper burial was even more important than helping the poor. And mourning lasted seven days. For Moses and Aaron back in the Old Old Testament, it lasted 30 days. Jesus knew how long the burial of the father could take. And he knew he did not have time. He did not have time for this man to make excuses, even if the situation was painful. Jesus wasn't being cruel when he said, let the dead bury the dead. You go and tell about the kingdom of God. He wasn't being cruel. The situation was urgent. There was not a lot of time left. And then we have the third scenario. This third, this third question about following. And Jesus' response is that if you're plowing and you look back. Now, I, I didn't grow up on a farm. I grew up in the country, but my dad was a minister, so, yeah. And so I know about, but 
I do know that when you're plowing, if you look back, that's going to be a problem if you keep looking back. Because <laughs> it's not going to be this. It's going to be <laughs> goodness knows where you may end up if you keep looking back. If you start plowing and keep looking back, it's not worth. If you don't hold the plow, even if you don't, if you don't have your eyes set, I mean, whether you're walking or riding, if you don't have your eyes set ahead and straight, goodness knows where you're going to end up. And so you're not worth anything as a farmer if you don't know how to plow, and you're not worth much in God's kingdom if you have excuses for not being able to follow when God calls, when Jesus calls. That idea of the plow and of being focused ahead. I'm trying to remember, because I didn't write it down, but I'm trying to remember I had a, a Facebook posting that I hung on to for forever, um, but it talked about the fact that the rear view mirrors are this big, small, small. The front window screen is much bigger because it's more important what's here than what's here. You need to know as you're driving what's coming up behind you or up beside you, but it's what's here that's important. As I drive up here, I am very focused on what's up here because all too often I will find a deer on the side of the road, usually dead. And so I'm very focused on what is ahead of me. It's not going to make any difference if I see a deer coming out of the bush behind me. I'll wish that I had seen it sooner maybe and could have enjoyed looking at it, but it's not going to hurt me. If it comes out in front of me and I'm focused on what's behind, yeah, there's going to be a problem. So back to Jesus. The excuses, the excuses that were given were good, but it represents a request to go in a completely different direction. What Jesus offered and continues to offer is the opportunity to follow on a journey of faith, to step up. But we have to do the stepping up. Now, I'm not saying that the journey that we're on means that we reject all responsibilities to family, to vocation, to friends, to our neighborhood, to our country. That's not what I'm saying. But rather, it encourages us to see those needs in light of our faith, in light of our belief, in light of our acceptance of Jesus Christ. To look through the lens of our commitment to Christ. And if we are truly disciples of Christ, if we are the disciples that we've been called to be, then we need to finish what Jesus came to do. We need to continue. We need to live so that others around us will see who this Jesus is, will understand who this Jesus is. We need to remind them that when you see Jesus, you have seen the face of God. We need to follow. We need to step up. We need to make that commitment. In the midst of our excuses, we need to be open to hearing what he's saying. Because we have been called. He's knocking. Are we answering?
Amen. According to the Apostle Paul, the fruit of the Spirit includes kindness and generosity, gifts of God that we enjoy. And as we present our offerings, as we commit ourselves, our gifts of time and talent, as well as monetary, we do so knowing that we do it in Christ's name for the sake of Christ. God, we know you to be kind and generous, and so we bring our gifts in gratitude and in joy. Pour out your spirit on these gifts and on our lives, so that we may, may bear the fruit of your spirit in every situation and in every relationship, through Christ our living Lord. Amen. offer our prayers, our prayers of thanksgiving, our prayers of intercession on behalf of others. And we remember, especially at this time, those who have lost loved ones in our community, those who are ill in our community. Let us pray. O oh God, you are a God of mercy, of love, of forgiveness. You are a God of our past and of our future. And we come before you this day filled with hopes and dreams and also burdens and blessings on our lives. We bring all that is in our hearts and our minds to you today, grateful for the goodness, seeking your comfort and strength, and listening for your guidance. You are a God of life and love, and you engage us in the midst of our lives when we need you. And we pray today for all those who are fearful about their future, for all those who wrestle with challenges at work or at home. We pray for all those who are finishing the school year, for those who have finished their school year and who are moving on to new and exciting events and, and activities. Be with all who teach, all who lead, all who guide. Be with our children as they move forward into so many activities this summer. And we remember before you all those who are weighed down by illness or worry, all those who are providing care for those in need, for those who have lost a loved one. We pray peace and love. Help us, O oh God, to face our fears and our challenges supported through your love. God, you are a God of courage and of comfort. And we pray for your presence as we wrestle with those things that seem too heavy to bear. We pray for the victims of violence and disaster, for their friends and family. We pray for refugees at, at risk in so many places in the world, remembering especially those who have fled the Ukraine and Afghanistan. We pray for those who are caught in despair and in poverty, both in our own community and in the other parts of your world. We pray especially at this time for those millions who have no food, who are starving. Renew the strength of all those challenged 
by realities beyond their control. Equip our leaders to support those who are in the greatest need. And we pray at this time, O oh God, for our country and our leaders as we prepare to mark Canada Day. Help us to be a force for justice and well-being in your world. Grant our leadership wisdom and integrity to make decisions that provide for a good future for all who call this nation home. Open our hearts to the opportunities that we have to serve you as we serve one another. And help us to be aware of the cries for justice in our midst. Guide us in repairing relationships that are strained by differences between and among us. Receive our prayers, O oh God, spoken and unspoken, as together we pray the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn, We Are One in the Spirit, 471. Blessing of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, ever three and ever one, be with us now and evermore. <laughs>